Which brings us to another key player in this game, the Hezbollah. How do you even define them? A political party slash militia slash Iranian proxy. And right now, Israel's biggest threat. The Hezbollah claim to have more than 100,000 fighters, well-trained, battle-hardened, and ready to fight. They are not like the Hamas or Islamic Jihad. The Hezbollah are a whole different ballgame. In the last few weeks, they have launched multiple attacks on Israel, dozens of rocket strikes, precision missiles, and artillery shelling. Israel has also been hitting back. Hezbollah says around 66 of their fighters have died. On the other side, the IDF has lost eight men. Today, these attacks increased. The Hezbollah struck 19 locations along the border with Israel. And there was a reason for it. The Hezbollah chief made a speech today, his first speech since the Israel-Hamas war. Now, the Hezbollah is led by this man, Hassan Nasrallah. Many of his aides have given statements on this war. But he was silent throughout. Today he broke that silence. The build-up was long, but his speech was longer, around one and a half hours of threats, warnings, and rhetoric. Nasrallah said the October 7th attack was 100% Palestinian, meaning the Hezbollah did not know about it. He praised the Hamas terrorists who carried out this attack, but he also answered the most pressing question. Will the Hezbollah jo join this war? Well, Nasrallah had an interesting answer. He says the Hezbollah has already joined the war. They did it on the 8th of October. Listen to this. Regarding our Lebanese front, as some were saying, His Eminence is going to announce joining the battle. We entered the battle on October 8th. What's happening in Gaza today is not like any other previous war. It's unlike anything that has happened before. It's not just another battle, it's a decisive and historic one. What unfolds after it will differ significantly from what it was before. And what does that mean? It means the status quo is likely to remain. Limited Hezbollah attacks and strikes, but no full-scale war. Now, for the moment, that seems to be Nasrallah's position. Having said that, it could change in the blink of an eye. Nasrallah warned about this. He said all options are on the table with Israel. What they choose will depend on Israel's actions in Gaza. And the whole country was waiting for this. Most schools and shops had been shut. Tens of thousands gathered in Beirut. Look at the crowds. All of them had just one question. Would their country join the war? Nasrallah may have given a vague answer, but you get the drift. He's not looking for more escalation. At least not yet. The US too had a similar assessment on the situation. They said the Hezbollah would not enter this war. See, we're concerned about, about uh, continued attacks on Israeli forces there uh, in the north, as are the Israelis. Um, uh, but I don't believe we've seen any indication yet specifically that Hezbollah is, is uh, ready to go in full force. The rest of Nasrallah's speech was along expected lines. America is the great Satan, Israel is lying, their soldiers will fail in Gaza, and Hamas did a great job on October 7th. Typical Hezbollah claims, nothing substantial. Yet concerns remain. And that's because of the Hezbollah's past. They're a violent and unpredictable group. Let's look a bit closely at their history. Who are they? Why do they hate Israel? And how big is their threat? The Hezbollah means party of God. It was founded in the year 1982, the same year that Israel invaded southern Lebanon. They wanted to drive out Palestinian militants based there. But after that, Israel occupied the area, southern Lebanon. So a group of Shia clerics got together. Their goal was twofold. One, drive the Israelis out. And two, establish an Islamic state in Lebanon. The inspiration was Iran. In 1979, the revolution had brought Ruhollah Khamenei, to power in Tehran. Hezbollah pledged allegiance to him. In return, Iran gave them support, all kinds of weapons, money and training. And with that support, Hezbollah went on the offensive. They attacked Israeli military assets in the south of Lebanon. They kidnapped dozens of Western citizens. They also took part in the Lebanese civil war. You see, Lebanon has a lot of sectarian divisions. You have the Christians, you have Sunni Muslims, you have Shia Muslims. And for 15 years, all of these groups fought each other from 1975 to 1990. After its founding, 
The Hezbollah also joined this fight. When the war ended, the civil war, most of the militias gave up their weapons. They were disarmed, but the Hezbollah was not. In the 1990s, they joined Lebanese politics. Around one third of the country were Shia Muslims, so they had popular support. It doesn't mean they abandoned their violence. The Hezbollah carried out guerrilla attacks on Israel. So in the year 2000, the IDF pulled out from Lebanon and Hezbollah claimed it as a major victory. They called it a major victory. They said that they were the first Arab army to make Israel give up land. But that confidence soon became overconfidence. In 2006, the Hezbollah launched attacks on Israel. It was a pressure tactic. A number of Hezbollah fighters were in Israeli jails. They wanted to get them out. But the move backfired. Israel responded with an all-out war. The fighting lasted for more than 30 days. At the end of it, Hezbollah lost more than 1,000 soldiers. And Israel, around 120. The attacks also changed the face of southern Lebanon. The place was reduced to rubble. Total damages were worth $2.8 billion. So the question is, will the Hezbollah risk a repeat? Because Lebanon's economy is in a really bad shape. U.S. aircraft carriers are just off the coast. So attacking will be costly. Having said that, they do have the firepower. More than 100,000 fighters, 120,000 missiles, and pretty soon, maybe air defenses too. The U.S. says Russia's Wagner Group could help Hezbollah. How? By giving them Russian SA-22 air defense systems. They can shoot down enemy jets and missiles. So the Hezbollah is mobilized and ready. All they need is a formal declaration of war. Thankfully, that, that did not come today. It's a political call for the Hezbollah as well. They have a cozy role in Lebanese politics right now. They call the shots. They have the best services. So why risk all of that with a war? At the same time, there will be pressure from Iran. If Tehran wants, if Tehran wants an escalation, they will turn to Hezbollah. In fact, one of their proxies has already declared war on Israel. The Houthis in Yemen, they've declared war. If Iran asks the Hezbollah to follow, will their leadership agree? I guess it's a test for, for them as well, to see how tight the axis of resistance really is.